Hello, I'm Sir Cam. Welcome back to another second channel video. This is an episode series where I talk about geography and the world and stuff. And today, I want to continue my series where I talk about every single border that a country does have by talking about Czechia, because Czechia is one of my favorite countries. Just saying the name already starts the argument as to, is it Czechia or the Czech Republic? Everyone has their own opinion, but it's actually a simple argument as to like, you know, both names are valid. The Czech Republic recently introduced a shorthand English name. In fact, it's the most recent country to introduce a brand new name, uh, introduce a brand new English shorthand name, which is Czechia, which is widely accepted as being the shorthand for the Czech Republic. In the same way, you can call the Russian Federation Russia, most people aren't offended, you can call the Czech Republic Czechia, and it's usually referred to that in tourism and shorthand English conversations, and that is how the two names exist side by side. So the country is the Czech Republic, officially constitutionally, it's usually referred to in English as Czechia, and the people that live there are Czechs. Now we've gone that out of the way, let's talk about the fact that Czechia is not only fascinating for its name, but also for its place in Europe, because it is an entirely landlocked country, which is the literal point where Eastern Europe meets Western Europe. It is the literal edge of the, you know, the, the communist bloc, the former communist bloc, uh, and because of that you can see a lot of the, you know, former divides from the Iron Curtain, which had to divide, one of the most fortified, uh, you know, borders by the way, uh, between Eastern Europe and Western Europe, because it had to be a thing which they did, for reasons we'll dive into later, but you can see, uh, still see, uh, looking at a map of like, say, GDP per capita, where the communist bloc and the, you know, the Western bloc kind of meet together. You can see that even today, after many years of growth, uh, most Eastern European countries are very far behind. They're improving very fast, especially those in the EU, but you can see how they're still lagging behind their Western counterparts. But looking at Czechia, they're the exception to that rule. They are just killing it. They're almost on a, you know, Italy or a uh, Spain level, and they're even beating uh, Portugal in terms of GDP per capita. So what I'm really saying here is to make a fair divide between West and East, to make it match money, which is what it means these days, really we should make uh, Czechia and Portugal trade places on the map, and then we'd have a perfectly balanced map. But no, more seriously, they're just talking about uh, that. Uh, Czechia is a country which still has some remnants of the Iron Curtain in it, and uh, funnily enough that you can find stuff like, oh yeah, there are Czech deer which will still avoid it for that reason. You can also see former countries on the other side, much older than the Cold War, hundreds of years old, which don't re aren't really remembered in any form, but you can still spot the remnants of it in the form of the Czech-Polish border, and just in general, uh, the fact that it is surrounded by four countries entirely, four very powerful countries, Germany, Poland, Slovakia, and Austria, is an interesting one because it has very positive relations with all four countries, and as well as having positive relations with all four countries, it also uh, has entirely open borders. So this might seem like a weird thing, like, so that doesn't really have any borders, but no, they're all part of the Schengen area, which means you can pass from Germany to Czechia, or Czechia to Austria, entirely freely with no border checks whatsoever, because they all have the same external uh, stringent border control. So with that said, and all out of the way, now we can start to talk about uh, one of the key things, which is the start of this, because Germany, Austria, and Czechia do share a tri-point border. This is where we'll start and end, because there's no C logical place for us to start. And and yeah, the thing I love about this tri-point border is it's a good example of one, look, it's a tri-point. You can have one part of your body in three different countries. This is, on this side, it's Germany. On that side, it's Austria. And over there, it's Czechia. So if you just lay over the top of it, you can have a limb in each country. But as well as being an interesting thing like that, you can see how this tri-point is on top of a mountain and it's also very snowy. So the reason it's on top of a mountain is because, of course, that's where three countries meet. It's a logical place to do it. But also the fact that you can see snow here represents something people forget about Czechia and the former Czechoslovakia and that is the fact that they actually do have a lot of mountains and a lot of cold terrain. You might assume that like, oh yeah, so Czechia, based on its position in Europe, you know, it's somewhere between cold and hot, but it's actually a very cold country relative to its, uh, you know, uh, latitude. And because of that fact, uh, they have one of the best ice hockey teams in the world, as well as a lot of other winter sports they do very good at. However, again, let's uh, not talk about that too much. Let's just talk about the fact that they do have mountains. This is where some of the border with Germany is defined. However, most of the uh, border of Germany is defined by rivers. So unlike uh, some borders, which are defined by, you know, kind of like where the ethnic areas line, they just kind of weave the new line among. Uh, although uh, Czechia used to have a huge German population, this German population was used as the German pretext for invading them during uh World War II, again, uh, one of the great betrayals was the Western powers just accepting that Germany could have the mostly German parts of Czechia, and then obviously they took the rest of Czechia and then Slovakia, and because of that, after World War II, partly because of their experiences with the World War, but also partly because of Soviet, uh, again, like, encouragement, they expelled most of the Germans, so even though this was true at one point, this is not true to this day, there are not many Germans in Czechia, there's, I think there's more Vietnamese people in Czechia, which is, again, whole other story we'll dive into, but yeah, that's, uh, so they can't divide the borders, along ethnic lines because they were very blurred at the time the border were drawn. So what they did for the most part is they used natural borders. As you can see, most of the 
uh, German Czech border is defined as just rivers. That's why it looks like it's about half squiggly lines and half straight lines. Half of it is defined as being where the rivers, uh, you know, one side of the river is Czechia's, one side is Germany, and then the other half, the bit where there's uh, flat lines, it's mostly just like, oh yeah, so we have a series of geographic points we've decided are the edge, and it goes from one to the other to the other. The reason they're so non-contested is because very few people live on either side. Again, looking at a map of uh, population in uh, Czechia, you can see how there's very little population on this side, and it's the same with Bavaria. Very few people live near the border, so we just have a few straight, uh, straight lines, and it's not really hotly contested. So you see a few weird points of the straight lines, but most of the things that look weird on the border are actually just because of natural geographic features. The reason there's a really tiny panhandle here, or uh, salient off, uh, you know, Czechia, is because the river just flows in a really weird way, and what are you gonna do? You're gonna give that land to Germany? Even though it looks better on a map, it doesn't make any sense, and Germany could never administer it, so that's why you see weird things like this, and that's really the reason for a lot of the salient you'll see in Czechia. So, uh, moving on though, because there's a lot of uh, fascinating stuff here, one of my favorite things about the Czechia-German border is that even though it used to be the site of the Iron Curtain dividing Europe in half, uh, these days they have improved some places, including uh, this place right here. So this is Einenstein uh, Station. It is literally a station which is on the border between Germany and between Czechia, which means, uh, funnily enough to me at least, that depending on where you wait for your train, you can wait for the exact same train on the exact same platform Part of it is in Czechia though, and part of it's in Germany. As you can see, that part of the station, all a German station. This part of the station, all a Czech station. And uh, <laughs> as you can see, that train's in Czechia, that train is over there in Germany, despite being at the exact same station and not the exact same platform, very close to the same platform though, uh, and that's a thing that you can find in this region just because of now the borders are open, things like this can happen, and yeah, you can catch a train going into Germany or going into Czechia despite being in the other country at the time, and it's just, it's, it's a weird situation, but it is a train station divided between countries. There's also a train station museum nearby, if that's your thing, if you ever go to this little village, do tweet me a picture or something, but yeah, it's just one of these weird examples because Interestingly enough, uh, after, you know, again, now that all countries are in the EU together, uh, there is really good train connections between all four countries, you know, as well as good road connections. You can very easily go from Czechia and Prague, its capital, to any of the four capitals surrounding it. You can go from Prague to Vienna, Prague to Berlin, Prague to Warsaw, or Prague to Bratislava very, very easily, which is a, it's a good thing in general. So anyway, let's get back to it. As you can see, mostly follows natural uh, fortifications, natural uh, things, with a few border points, which are just arbitrary uh, geographic locations uh, kind of spliced in, and then you reach uh, some places like this. This is a national park, one of the very few in the Czech Republic, uh, which also has some of the old uh, fortifications representing uh, the, again, the, 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 some of the uh, Iron Curtain fortifications. As you can see, it's a border fence, which is not just a border fence with watchtowers. It was one of the, they had to put like 17,000 men guarding this, and I really want to stress this. Every time this comes up, when you hear about border walls, you think, oh yeah, because you want to keep people out, and that's, you know, like, don't want people climbing into your country. But in the case of Eastern Europe, in the case of the Iron Curtain, which looked like this, by the way, between communist countries and non-communist ones, it was because so many people wanted to leave that if they didn't secure the border, they would have a huge population drainage problem. So they put a lot of effort into these huge border things and spending you know, millions and millions just to keep people in the country. These were not borders to keep people out, they were borders to keep people in, and that is a whole kind of nightmare. Also, kind of more lightheartedly, because again, I want to really stress that every time, because I didn't realize that whenever this came up in school. But the other lighthearted thing is that because they built these board fortifications a few hundred meters into the line, uh, it actually meant that a lot of German tourists would just like kind of walk over it without realizing and be like, oh, you're in Czech land now and that'd be a whole crisis. Also a whole crisis is the fact that Czech deer still, uh, you know, Czech deer and German deer are still entirely separate groups of deer because they avoid the Iron Curtain. And I found the thing I found funny about this article is the fact that one of the scientists had to explain to the BBC that the deer are not ideological about it, they're just very conservative in their habits. I like to believe there's a commie deer out there like, no, the Iron Curtain is still up, I refuse to, you know, associate with those German capitalists list is, but no, it's a, it's, 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 <laughs> it's just a funny thing that the deer still stay on their side of the border because they've been trained by this wall existing for so long that they just can't cross over it, and so they don't want to cross over it, and so they don't. So yeah, that's fascinating by itself. But moving up, again, you can see more of this happening by itself, Do you reach something which is, again, a salient, a panhandle, whichever way you want to say it, because they have such a reliance on natural fortifications between Germany and between Czechia, you can see there's a huge salient going up here, and then Germany has a similar one going back down because of the natural path of the river. But interestingly enough, both of these salients have salients coming off them. So you can see this is a panhandle with a tiny panhandle coming off it, which looks like this in the map, in case you're curious. There is a stretch of Czech land this big. I think it's like 10 meters across also. It is literally 20 meters from one side to the other, probably 
even less over here. You can see it's literally 14 meters wide stretch of land, but it belongs to Czechia. They have the right to claim taxes on it. They have the rights to do these sorts of things. And that is just the weird border situation. You can also, similarly to the Northern Ireland video, you can cross over if you want to go from here to there. Uh, you can cross from Germany into Czechia, into Germany, into Czechia, just along a simple road route. And again, in modern times, it's not actually that big of a deal. So yeah, the other interesting thing about this place, besides being too salient, is it's the point where Bavaria ends and Saxony begins. So this is where Czechia borders Saxony, which is a part of former East Germany. So that means that the border went from being the Iron Curtain, crazy most fortified border in Europe, to, oh yeah, kind of friendly countries. So even though East Germany and uh, Czechia still had border controls, quite high border controls actually, like comparable to hostile countries today, uh, you could still go from Eastern Germany to Czechia on vacation if you wanted to, and uh, all these sorts of things. And that's just a wonderful a little coincidence of the border. And uh, yeah, basically the East German side is more friendly than the uh, West German side, even though they're improving things on the West German side, you'll see a lot of villages, which are like half on one side and so on and so forth, because it was a more possible thing between two communist countries, again, uh, because of the whole USSR, than it was between two capitalist countries. And then again, very at the very close to the edge here, you can see there's another weird situation where the, the rivers flow into weird places. Although there is one case where it's not because of rivers, there's just, again, this is one of those things where you can't really explain it besides, oh yeah, a a person who eventually his land became part of Czechia owned a bit of land which went out weirdly out like this. So part of the, uh, again, the river up here forms the border, but not all of it. And then, uh, anyway, my point is look at the land, look at the border. It just doesn't really make much sense, but you can see where, again, there's, <laughs> there's some Czech land just right next to a couple of German villages for reasons that aren't really very clearly explained. And I couldn't find any information on anywhere. So if you know the story, let me know. But again, I, there is no widely available information about why there's a random salient of just Czech villages. But the assumed reason in these cases is that again, some Czech lord that eventually became part of Czechia just uh, happened to own some land which went out like that before the countries were so formalized. So next up, we have a tri-point border, so you can't favorite things between Czechia, Deutschland and Poland. Uh, Germany uh, and Poland and as you can see right here it's in a river so you can't actually physically really go there you can there's like a table nearby where you can pretend you're in the river but you'd have to swim into the river and do it that way if you wanted to but anyway with that said now we've got the Czech Polish border to talk about and the Czech Polish border again uh, we've gone over it in the Poland video so I'll be fairly brief about it where you can be like oh yeah there's some interesting things here such as uh, for instance there's the uh, you know, salient of Poland which means that some people who live in this uh, Czech village right here. If you want to go to the German town nearby, it's like, oh yeah, the fastest route is through Poland. It's it's a legit thing that you might be like, oh, well, I'll go through Poland to get to Germany to save some time today. Uh, again, interesting conversations you don't usually get to have in your country probably. You get to have if you live along one of the borders in Czechia. But yeah, looking on, uh, along the rest of it, you can see how it has a similar pattern to the German one, except it has a much higher reliance on these uh, these river borders between them as well as the mountains, which do separate the two countries. And, uh, you know, this is an interesting thing that you can follow all the way along. But my favorite points along it are, you know, because there's a lot of things we could say, like, oh, it goes in and out. But we mostly mentioned that in the Poland video. So instead, I'll talk about something that wasn't mentioned there, because this is something that just fascinates me beyond belief. It is a town which partly exists on the uh, Polish side of the border and partly exists on the Czech side. It's a bigger town on the, on the Polish side, but it still is about 50-50 in terms of which side it exists on. So what's the deal with that? And I looked into it and it was way more fascinating than I figured. I figured it was like, oh yeah, uh, you know, they just redrew the border, it was kind of weird. But the story behind this is it's actually a part of former Silesia. So Silesia is one of those countries you very rarely hear about outside of like, you know, like some weird history book, like, oh yeah, Silesia is a place that existed, does not exist anymore. And uh, although sometimes American immigrants will be like, oh yeah, I'm from Silesia, especially if it's like the American Europeans, they're like, my great, 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 great granddad moved here from uh, Silesia. And it's like, ah, not a country anymore. That's that's how you know that's a trick. But no, um, basically Silesia is a former country. And one of the duchies of Silesia was known as the, um, <laughs> the Duchy of Silesia was actually known as name on screen right now. It's escaped me on the, on the spot, but basically uh, his name is on screen right now. Here is a rough guide to what it looks like on a map. It's a terrible guide because Europe at this time had many, many tiny countries. Uh, but just to quickly quick show you, this is their flag. You can still find it in some rare places to this day. And because it was, you know, both these pl uh, places were one country at one point when, uh, you know, Silesia, uh, kind of d dissolved and when Europe had this big phase of like redrawing border and stuff, one of the things after World War I uh, that both Czechia and Poland wanted was this entire area. They both wanted the entire duchy of Silesia, 
Again, it's one of the duchies of Silesia. Uh, they both wanted the entire place to themselves, so they actually fought a genuine war over it. They both wanted the entire thing. They both eventually agreed that they'd do it along the, you know, the river as the border, but then Poland was like, actually, what we're gonna do instead is we're just gonna to have our election on your side and integrate them while no one's looking. Czechia was mad, they had another little fight over it. And uh, yeah, eventually they just agreed when they were both friendly communist bloc countries or forced to be friendly communist bloc countries, that sure, we'll go with the compromise agreement again. And that is why there is a town, which despite having people, which are again, both ethnically the same, they're both, um, you know, Silesian, which isn't really a nationality you talk about today. Again, it's a it's a country and identity which used to exist, but just got kind of submerged into free countries because Germany has a part of it too. But yeah, nowadays uh, there is just people separated by a border. Doesn't matter because they're in the Schengen zone. You can literally just walk across the bridge into the other part of what used to be your town. But it's a town that was divided in two by the kind of struggle and the kind of splitting of Europe. And I find that to be interesting. So here you go. You can see there is a, a map saying you're now entering Poland. But yeah, most people aren't too big for, <laughs> most people don't find it too big of a deal. And it's just one of those interesting borders in Europe, in my opinion. Look at it. It's just a, it's just a bridge. There's a line showing clearly where the border is. But it's just a bridge where Poland meets Czechia. But these people don't care because they work on one side, live on the other. And it's actually one of uh, the Euro regions, so they have a lot of cooperation with each other beyond just the nation state they're a part of. So there's a thing you might not have realized. So yeah, I find that fascinating. Maybe you do too. If you don't though, let's move to the Poland, Slovakia, and Czechia tri point border. So this is a very recent tri point. It's only needed to exist in the last, you know, 30 years because Czechia and Slovakia, they were part of Czechoslovakia. Who would have guessed based on those two names? But yeah, when they dissolved, um, they had a very friendly divorce between the two countries. But that does of course mean when you do have a divorce, you gotta separate your land somehow. So the internal administrative uh, boundaries between Czechia and Slovakia became the Czech-Slovak border. And actually, this is a, you know, th this border is a, you know, it's a fairly simple one to go over. There's not a lot of like cross town stuff because they could very easily just make it so there weren't any awkward things going on. Um, of course, uh, there is the, you know, the, the awkward like towns which were split on the wrong side. But again, most of the uh, Slovakia have very, very, very friendly relations to this day. And I try, I want to try and like explain how they're friendlier than any other countries that split apart. Because most countries that split or are their neighbors have some parts of them that are friendly, some parts that aren't. But just to put this in perspective, the current um, president or uh, the current leader of uh, you know, Czechia is a Slovakian billionaire who moved, he's, I think he's the second richest world leader in the world. He's like, uh, he's the richest man in Czechia and he's, he's the prime minister. He's the, he's the, he's the leader of uh, Czechia. His title will be over there somewhere. But yeah, the fact that, you know, that's the case, kind of cool, right? The fact that they have so many uh, people from each other's country and when they meet, you know, when, when a Czech meets a Slovak abroad, it's like meeting someone from your own country. It's just like, oh yeah, we had that divorce, but we're still great friends. But instead of most people who have a divorce and they're still great friends, they legit, legitimately, as far as I can tell, based on every Czech person I meet, it's like, yeah, Slovaks, they're cool guys. Um, because they have such a complex and shared history, they only split apart recently and they still have very close friendships. The only ways in which they really differ is that Slovakia started as a poorer country because that's one of the just, I guess, consequences of being outweighed in a larger union. There's about two times as many Czechs as Slovaks. And uh, also, although both countries joined the EU and the Schengen area at the same time, uh, Slovakia has adopted the Euro as their currency and they're more uh, pro-EU and pro all the things that come with that. Whereas Czechia is a bit more Eurosceptic and still has their own currency, the Czech Karuna. Although it's actually called the Czech crown. This annoys me, you know, tiny rant with Toycat time. Here's the thing about the, you know, the, a lot of currencies around the world, people insist on calling them in their native language. We have an English word for this. When you speak to Czech people in English, they call it the crown. But people are like, it's actually the Karuna, I'll have you know. Yeah, in their own language, you know, like Germany is called Deutschland in their own language. And <laughs> long story short, uh, you can call it the crown or the Karuna. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, because you're allowed to use English words when speaking English to people. When you're, taught, when you're telling a story, about someone in another language, you don't have to tell it in their language because we're using English to communicate. And anyway, long story short, border between Czechia and Slovakia, one of the friendliest in the world, although it's technically the same level of friendly as everywhere else, but the connections which you know existed when they were our country survive to this day. And yeah, you can still catch a train uh, across it and you can drive across it and do anything you want because that's a wonderful thing. And I, I like that personally. It's a nice, again, it's, it's happy to see two countries actually uh, divorce that way. And it's just a nice little thing. So let's move on to the tri point between Czechia, Slovakia and Austria, also a recent tri point border. It's along a river, so you, again, you have to swim into it if you want to. Would not recommend doing so, but if that's your thing, you can go swim there. And then we see the border between Czechia and Austria. So unlike Germany's border, where it's kind of like half friendly, half less friendly, the border between Czechia and Austria was entirely 
fortified during uh, the Cold War because obviously Austria was a neutral country and uh, they were doing the whole capitalism thing which is no good if you're a communist country or forced communist country so um, yeah Czechia had a very very much enforced border along the Czech Austria thing and yeah you can still kind of see that in some places where former border Czechs used to be like right here for instance fun fact by the way this is an Austrian road which is entirely at the edge of the border so if you crash your car on the right side of the road you crash into Austria. But if you crash the car very slightly off to the left of the road, you'll crash your car in Czechia. That's gonna be an insurance nightmare, I'm sure. So, pro tip, drive carefully along this, I mean, drive carefully anywhere, but drive carefully along this road between Austria and Czechia, or the Czech Republic. Uh, you can see there's a few other roads and a few other rail links between the two countries. Uh, interestingly enough, actually though, Google has a few uh, like kind of false, uh, I don't know what the correct term is. I was gonna say false flag, but that's definitely not the correct word for it. But uh, there are a few like false train stations along the border between Czechia and Austria, you'll start to see, um, which is just a, a weird uh, nature of like Google's mapping service that there's a technical break. When you go from Czechia to Austria, even though again, the Austrian rail jets and the, um, or the OBB and the uh, Czechian rail service both run across the border. There's like a technical break where you're going from one country to the other. Fun fact, maybe you didn't realize. Uh, you can also see how most of the border, pretty peaceful, same kind of thing where like, it's it's mostly, uh, you know, not occupied by people, so it's mostly not a big deal. However, uh, one of the things I do find fascinating is that because it seems as though their border follows the old path of the river and hasn't been updated, you can see there's a few places like this where there's some Austrian land on the wrong side of the river, that no one actually claims, no one, <laughs> but yet still kind of exists and lives there. There's, you can see it all over the place where it's just like, you know, what is the deal with that? It's old borders, it's fancy, it's it's wacky, it's a thing. So yeah, with that said, let's now just move over to the end. Austria, Slovakia, uh, Austria, Czechia, they have some very odd places, very tiny gaps that are technically owned. Because again, the reason this looks so ridiculous on the map, the reason you look at the, uh, the shape of their border and say, what is the deal with that? It's just because it's the uh, the edge of the thing. So let's talk about the Czech-Austrian relations now, because it's worth noting that despite me saying at the start here, they're like, you know, Czech your Austria, the most fortified border in Europe, pretty much. It was, it was the one people often tried to break across and often succeeded, but on an official level, it was fortified. But the thing is, Czechs and Austrians, despite that, are some of the closest, again, allies besides like Slovaks you can find in the world, because the two countries have a hugely shared history. When you look at the Austrian-Hungarian empire, for instance, it included both countries because the both, and in fact, in any form of the country before that basically included both countries under the same ruler. If you take the past 500 years of history of both Austria and Czechia, they are under the same nation state. And that's something that's not a very common thing between countries. So yeah, despite that, Czechs and Austrians, again, for the most part, consider each other good friends. And that's where I wanted to kind of end today's video actually. And just kind of say that despite the fact that you'd expect, you know, especially with the German thing in World War II, you'd expect there to be some serious bitterness, especially, you know, even if it was any other country, I feel like the whole uh, betrayal of Czechia, the whole betrayal of the Czech Republic, that would be a big, uh, you know, the betrayal of Czechoslovakia technically, but that would be a huge thing. They remember forever and they hate the West forever about it. But in Czechia, it's more of a practical, like many generations ago, let's not have that again. And I've always liked the attitude. Every single Czech person I've met has been one, um, super like willing to discuss and actually talk about things and two have actually been very uh well you know i mean also attractive but also been very pragmatic and practical about things and that's something i've always uh liked about uh, czechia and prague and the, the czech subscribers that i've spoken to online and offline so before we go because i could talk about czechia things i love about it all day i do want to talk about something else which is mildly relevant because i mentioned before as a passing comment that yeah czechia is quite eurosceptic it's one of the most eurosceptic countries in the eu especially of eastern europe but despite that fact uh you know there's two big reasons to be eurosceptic there's the euro crisis and the whole euro thing and there's immigration but they don't use the euro they're legally obliged to but let's just say for a very very long time they won't be regardless of legal obligation but again to keep things simple on that so that they're, they're not they're not going to be using the euro and they also in terms of immigration uh so here is a map of immigration in Europe, uh, the amounts increase from 2010 to 2015. As you can see, big increases everywhere. This is why the anti-immigrant uh, you know, kind of uh, outlook has increased significantly in a lot of these countries, uh, or in some of these countries at least. Uh, however, interestingly enough, if you look at Czechia, exactly the same, plus 0, 0.0. So I think uh, the issues they talk about, at least in the political spectrum, I know most Czechs know this, but it is mostly a phantom issue. Um, it's, it's, in fact, I'd say politics in Czechia, if you do decide to follow them, they're very interesting, but they've taken a, it, they're, they're, yeah, again, I'd say they're very interesting. There's a Slovak, there's a Slovak billionaire as uh, the guy in charge, and they're very anti-EU, but also kind of not, and they also, again, have very, 
they're one of the biggest manufacturing po points in Europe, so they have a lot of different interests than other countries, and I find that to be fascinating. Maybe you do too. So, also, key thing, because you might be like, okay, I love Czechia, you convinced me, Toy Cat, how do I get there? Uh, most of the time, you're gonna fly in through Prague's airport. Prague is the main, main point anyone ever flies into, especially from another continent. Uh, there are actually a surprise number of flights to the US and to Asia, including, like, Vietnam, because there's a lot of Vietnamese immigrants in Czechia, uh, because when they were communists, they just invited a lot of Vietnamese in, and to this day, you'll still find a, a way higher number of Vietnamese people per capita in Czechia than anywhere else in Europe for reasons. But um, yeah, so you're, you're, most people get to Prague via that reason and the Prague area. However, there is also an airport, a pretty big airport in Brno and Ostrava. So if you live in Europe and you want to get to Czechia on the cheap, there's a lot of budget airline flights into both those places, including, this is a really odd one, I, I love weird air routes, it's like, a, why does this exist? There's a flight from Ostrava to Dubai, and uh, can't wrap my head around that one, find it fascinating, and yeah, would recommend, uh, at some point, I'd like to go into one of these places, partly because, again, they're like, interesting, second tier uh, Czechia cities, but also because, uh, again, the skiing thing I mentioned earlier, uh, I don't think most people know you can ski in Czechia, and I feel like there's gotta be some, that, I feel like that even makes it really good or really bad, depending on like how hipster you feel at that time of day. But I guess I'll go there at some point and I'll find out because I like snow, I like mountains, and you know, I like Czechia. So you know what the best thing would be? Combining my three things I love together. But no, before we uh, end today also, one last thing, uh, I would uh, encourage you to check out the Reddit because I'm enjoying this border series, talking about every border one by one. If you want to discuss it with other people, just share something. Uh, the Reddit is the best place, reddit.com slash r slash toycat. Or if you have something that's like really long, you want to email it to me, you're like, okay, I know for when you cover the border of this country, you need to know this thing, you can email me, ibx2cat at gmail.com. Won't guarantee I'll respond via email, because email is email, and it, you know, wakes me up at 7am, I'm like, uh, and I very remember, but you know, if you want to email me, you can email me, ibx2cat at gmail.com, or you can go on the Reddit to discuss with myself, other people, or whatever, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really liking the way the Reddit's like, there's more and more people there, checking it out, and if you want to be one of those people, go there and do that. But with that said, I hope you all enjoyed this thing, because I'll see you all in another thing. Just kidding. Second channel. Don't care. Goodbye.